When you break a bone, it's painful, definitely. And it's very, very tender, exquisite to touch. You won't want anyone near it. And then, of course, then you're immobilized when that initial pain goes. It's taken me a long time, the last time, to get over, over that fracture because it broke again. And so you become quite self-isolated. Well, we know that one in two women over the age of 50 and one in five men are living with fractures linked to osteoporosis. Uh, that's three and a half million people in this country. And we want to do the best job that we can to reach out to them with really great quality support services. But we do have an eye on the future as well. And we know that research will move us towards a cure for this condition. That's why our Osteoporosis and Bone Research Academy is launching this new research roadmap, which tells us where the funding and the research effort needs to be put to get to that future. Osteoporosis is a thinning of the bones. And to some extent, um, we all develop thinning of the bones as we get older. It's a, a, a normal ageing process, if you like. But um, in some people who, perhaps because they have less bone to start with or because they lose bone more rapidly as they get older, the uh, consequences of this bone loss are that bones become frail and break much more easily than, than normal. So after a, a fairly minor fall, for example, uh, a, a break may occur, or in the spine, vertebral fractures can occur without really any trauma, sometimes just coughing or bending down. So the Royal Osteoporosis, Osteoporosis and Bone Research Academy uh, was set up earlier this year. What we hope to do through this academy is bring together bone scientists, clinical bone researchers, but also clinicians and really importantly patient advocates to create a core expertise that is going to enable us to prosecute that mission of curing osteoporosis. And of course a cure can mean several things. It can mean preventing the disease in the first place. It can mean reversing the effects of the disease in somebody who already has it. And it also means um, helping people who have the disease to live with it as well as possible. And we've set out our ideas in the new roadmap, which has identified uh, gaps in, in the understanding and in the literature around osteoporosis and our key priorities across three working groups. What we've set out here is the different trajectories of bone health throughout life. And if we look at the, uh, the lower blue line here, you can see this is somebody who's uh, not really maximised their peak bone mass and they seem to have a rather increased rate of bone loss and that's what we're trying to avoid. What we're hoping is to move people up to the upper blue line where we've improved their bone development, we maintain bone more successfully and minimise fracture risk in older age and we have three phases of bone health. If we look in the first part of the life course we're really wanting to maximise peak bone mass, we're building strong bones for life. Uh, in terms of the middle part of the life course, we're talking about maintaining bone health, so consolidating that bone bank. As we move into the uh, older age, uh, we're talking about minimising fracture risk and here we're really aiming for fracture-free healthy ageing. One working group is looking at causes, particularly um, to do with genetics, the diet, the microbiome hopefully to identify new targets for treatment of osteoporosis. Then there is a working technology working group, which is exploring novel technologies for automated diagnosis of osteoporosis and also its management. And then thirdly, there's an effectiveness working group, which aims to provide universal fracture risk assessment in primary care and also to make better use of existing interventions. The research roadmap will be used by patients so that they can see the progress we're making towards working for a cure. It will be helpful in raising the public profile of osteoporosis and related to that uh, we hope that it will help to attract fundraising to support our research over the next three to five years. I'm one of thousands, thousands of people like me that have these fractures it's accepted as part of old age and it just simply doesn't have the profile that other illnesses have.
When I meet somebody who has had multiple fractures and can't exercise and just can't really live the life as they would like to, you know, I'm really reminded of the, the massive impact of osteoporosis on everyday life. What we need to do here is achieve a step change by bringing everyone together with a common goal. And if we can tackle population health, tackle the high risk groups and ensure that everybody who is at high risk gets assessed and treated appropriately, then we will have really gone a, an awfully long way to achieving a world without fragility fractures.